All right, mud lovers. Morning. <laughs> How you doing? We're out here, mud lovers on the Medway, and we've good old hovercraft Mark. Done a great little job, didn't it? Getting us out Very here. smooth today. <laughs> well, guys, I've just seen over there. Look, there's a whole heap of wonders to, to check out, and it just carries on going. Look, further down the creek. Look, they're everywhere. This place is absolutely phenomenal. Mudlarker's dream, it really is. Let's go and get some luck in the muck. This is pretty random. Test tubes. That's what they are. Little test tubes, isn't it? Whole collection of them. Someone's just dumped a load of test tubes here. How funny. There's loads of them. And someone's going to tell me they're worth an absolute fortune, aren't they? These retro test tubes. Some of them are broken. Mad. Mad, mad, mad. But look, he just carries on and on and on. What you got, Mark? A nice green poison bottle, oh, not lovely. to be taken. Beautiful. Oh wow, it's actually, is that stopper, was that stopper in there? No. Oh, <laughs> that's not beautiful be though, taken. they're lovely to find. Well done. Green ones are beautiful. They're normally blue. Yeah, green and blue, but greens are lovely. I do love a green bottle. Well, just found this. It's uh, yeah, probably a lemonade bottle with a you know blob top type screw neck. You know, I'd be happy to find one of these on the Thames any day of the week. And uh, this one's got like a hand motif in the middle. That's really cool. Probably some more writing underneath it. That's interesting. Oh wow, that's lovely. That's a really nice bottle. See so if there's any other writing in there later. Well, there's definitely some writing around the top. Wow, what a difference a cleanup makes, eh? This beautiful bottle is by makers Green and Smith from Burnley, a long way from the southeast. Thanks to David Shaw from the Bottle Diggers and Collectors Facebook group, he tells me that the strange object being held aloft is in fact a weaving shuttle from a loom. Now, I'm not sure what the connection is between weaving and a drinks company, but if you think you know, please comment below. In the bucket goes for now. Nearly full. <laughs> and just when you think it was petering out a bit, you go around the corner. Look at it all. Must be so much treasure here. Awesome. So I have another bottle here. Amongst many, but I thought I saw a bit of writing on there. Let's give it a little wash. Oh, sinking here. Come on, foot. There we go. Yeah, there was some writing on it. Could be teaspoons, might be something more interesting. Oh. Alex Parsons. Must be a chemist or something, I reckon. Cool, look him up. Or her. This neat little file is from Alex Parsons of Chatterton in Manchester in Northern England. The company packed up, by which they mean bottled and labelled medical liquids such as glycerine, and also nuts and engine oil. They also made other products such as plasters and corn paste. They used travelling agents to sell these products, as is evident by this advert from the 1930s. It reminds me of the brilliant movie The Founder, where Michael Keaton plays a travelling salesman as he tries to sell milkshakes before finally discovering McDonald's. Have you seen the film? Did you like it? Leave a comment below. Nice little file there, probably a chemist. 
Awesome. I like these little small ones. <laughs> Don't take that much room in the bucket. In it goes. Be careful, there's lots of sharp glass around here, but some treasures in between. Nice little bead. What's that little thing there? Oh, I thought it was a little duck. Oh, that's cute. It'd be good if it was a duck, because um, Mark keeps ducks. He might like that. If not, someone might like it. Probably a little soap dish that's broken. Cute. Well, there's tons of bottles around here. Mark's picked up the only piece of flint because he thinks it looks like a dog. Take a look. <laughs> it's a Staffy's head. There's the ears. Yeah. And the nose. Cute. I can Eyes. see that. Yeah, okay. that's, yeah, that's quite believable. And if you turn it over, it's another dog another head. Another doggy. You're seeing, you're seeing things in, uh, in Flint. There's a name for that. And you see faces in things. Can't think of the name of it, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Are you going to keep it? No. No, he's going to give it, <laughs> leave it here. We'll leave it here. <laughs> leave it for someone else. It's now called Doggy Flint Corner. Yeah, Mark, I know it's, it's not a duck. What do you think about a... Uh... Oh. <laughs> Lovely. It's yours if you want it. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Say so yeah for the camera. Oh, that's lovely, thank you. I'll put that in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark may not have the space for this adorable bird bath come ashtray, but maybe you will after I've done my magic in the 60 second makeover. This piece will be up for grabs on my eBid store, so why not check that out at the end of the video, the link for which is in the video description. Well, didn't our feathered friend scrub up well? I wanted the gold leaf to highlight the mend, a bit like the Japanese art form Kitsugi, rather than trying to hide it and blend it in. I don't know what type of bird it is, so if you know, please leave it in the comment below. And also, it needs a name, so why not get creative in the comments? Remember last time we had a little doll? Don't have a leg. I think we've already got a left foot. <laughs> got two left feet on our doll. <laughs> I'll put it in the bucket anyway. Another little file there. Anything on it? No, plain. Oh, I think it's plain. Just the algae. Makes you think there's stuff on it sometimes. I've got to leave the plain ones here for now. Might come back for them another day. <laughs> well, I can't believe my eyes, there's just so much here. This place is absolutely phenomenal. Mudlarker's dream, it really is. Well, there's not very much stoneware here. No ginger beers or anything like that, but that's a little inkwell. But um, it's actually an ink bottle, should I say, not a well. But again, it's been in the fire and now encrusted on this. I don't think. That'll come off. Oh, there's a buckle there, look. Mad. Fuck it. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna come off. Oh, I'm gonna leave that. I don't really want it. Don't wanna smash my hand up anyway. Now that looks like the shape of another ginger jar. You see the end, see the top of that there? See with ginger jar, it's a broken bottle. But it looks like it's a ginger jar. Two in one day. Can it be complete? Oh yes! 
again. Probably got a few fleckles of paint as in where they decorated it for the export market. Well, I mean, there's another bottle there. Oh. Bit of a plain Jane, this one, though, I think. Yeah, look, this one's just got a little flicker of paint around the top. Maybe I'll put this one on the Etsy store. It should clean up right though, but that crazing. Forget the paint for a second, but just look at that crazing. It's taken hundreds of years to get that beautiful crazing. Sometimes there's a maker's mark on the bottom. I'll have to take that and clean it up though. I don't think I'm gonna get very far here. Maybe not. But yeah, I think I'll take that just for the beautiful grazing. Yeah, beautiful. Just one line around the top. Obviously mass produced. Love it, really do. And I'm just looking around here, it's unbelievable. You've got bottles all everywhere and coming out the bank is another inky. Oh, it's broken. And I've got a leak in my welly, which is annoying, but I'm forgetting about that because I'm finding so many wonderful things. Another ginger jar. There you go, it's going me other one. There, yeah, mudlarking dove. Typical animal, puts his ass to you when you want to film yeah. it. Hello. Well, I'll give you a bit of bread if you want. You're not a bit of bread. You know what'll happen, I'll throw the bread in and it'll fly away. I had a lovely homing pigeon. Sold it five times on eBay. You sold it? <laughs> five yeah. times, yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> well, I can't, I can literally can't walk two steps without finding something that I want to film. And uh, just rub this one off, so to speak. And it's still sitting in the mud. And it says there, Mackie & Co. Where's this from? Hive Kent. That's a nice one. Anything else on it? No, just that. Probably a beer maker. Nice black glass. Beautiful. All this history just sitting down here waiting to be discovered. Isn't it amazing? Santa's got his sack out. <laughs> well, I saw this one out of the bank and I thought I'd give it a quick, quick look. And again, it's got some writing on it. Cough cure. Me and Mark have both got a cold. Um, so this might come in handy. <laughs> Liquid fruta. Sounds tasty, actually. Look at down here. She must be freezing. Oh, the ornament of a girl. Shame she's not complete. I think there's an alarm there as well. Or is it just a handle or something? Yeah. I'll plonk her up here. Just keep an eye on things for us. <laughs> We're having a fucking good time. Very good. This is absolutely loaded. It's amazing just what you can find. Space. Oh, we've got Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Let's give it a quick, quick rinse. It's got some words on. You love anything with words on? What's that say? Hey. Same. Hey. This is a bit more cleaning, I think. A and M Cat Cat Cato Limited, Ilford, Ilford and Branches. That's a nice little London maker. That's the key for that one. Measuring. Yeah, so it's a chemist. That's beautiful. 
one of the top finds of the day. It turns out that Kato chemists enjoyed selling all manner of products from rat remover to pile cures, Nostraline for your colds to ladies, sorry, Securitine, a formula for ladies, of course, to get those stubborn stains from their family's clothes. Reassuringly non-flammable, therefore no danger of fire or explosion. That's why you've got to always turn these things over because a lot of them are plain, but now and again you get one which is personalised to the chemist. That's a view. Wiki, do you want to put in your bucket or do you want to put in your bag? You can have it. Oh, okay, thank you. Lovely, woohoo! Oh, I've got quite a bit of this one. As you've just heard Mark say, he donates many of his finds to Slough Fort, which is a Victorian fort on the Thames Estuary, built at the same time as Who and Darnit Fort. Stay tuned as we get a private tour of the fort, where Mark drops off his latest cachet of finds for their walk-in museum. Little hexag and a wink. Yay, it's complete. Little sheer top. Wow, what a day we're having. I keep saying it, but it is incredible. Well, it's not all bottles. I just found this nice little Victorian button. Looks like it's probably Bakelite. But uh, very inspired by Queen Victoria. When she lost Albert, she started wearing black and then black became very popular. But he won't take this one. Sadly broken. Looks like a little um, blackberry. You got something there, Santa? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Englefield. Englefield trademark. London. Yeah. It's got a strange little, like, thing on it. Another one for your bag. <laughs> Beautiful. Very interesting. Englefield Humperdinck. <laughs> <laughs> between my legs a little poison bowl nice little not to be taken gorgeous lovely green color love finding these always a keeper well the tide's nearly in we're just about to set off and i was just having a little walk around here i just noticed that at my feet that's really cool Anybody know what that is? Well, that is a fairy light. That's really cool. I like that. In fact, it's still got the piece of a uh, wire around it, and it would have hung from probably a Christmas tree. And then when electricity was invented, they got rid of these. I think I'll put a candle in that. You could probably ground down some of these edges, perhaps. By well, saying that, it looks quite nice as it is. Yeah, these are sweet. Don't find many of these. They're quite rare to find. Complete because they're so fragile. You see the next bit nibbled a bit. I'm happy with that. What do you reckon that is? Uh, do you know? It's quite odd. It's a background. Christmas lantern. It is Christmas lantern, but it's not modern, it's Victorian. Oh, that yeah, because they used oh, to hang them, up, hang them up on the Christmas trees. That's it, yeah. And then when the electricity was um, invented, they didn't need these anymore. But that's a lovely mauve colour. We'll put a tea light in that later and we'll see uh, see that illuminated. Just see the mauve colour there. Or plum, whatever, claret, whatever colour you want to call it. I'm happy with that. So as you can see, the creek is filling up behind me. We need to get out of here, sharpish, 
before we get cut off. Uh, we don't get long here, but what, we, what we've done in the short amount of time is find some amazing stuff. Travel light, he says. Don't take too much, he says. It's really heavy. Lipping it, Mark. I you think really... we've got to do two trips home. <laughs> well, there's plenty more to be found in that creek than you. Yeah. Nice little mixing pot, still use that. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Well, they're really cool, but this one was a little heartbreaker. I love that one. Dr. M.A. Wajid M.B. London. M.B. means no. Master of... Oh, M.D. Master of Dentistry or something, maybe? M.D. Usually means Master of something, doesn't it, if you're a doctor? Lovely. Yeah, we see most of these come up. Beautiful. Not to be taken. But we're taking them anyway. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think Mark's going to be selective, take uh, maybe, I don't know, have ever, ever many half of these back. That's a nice one. We didn't see that one come up. I think that's bloody lovely, that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah our teapot lid. <laughs> Friggin' in the rigging. Well, Mark, I think we deserve the glass of wine, don't you? It's on the dirty penis, by Christ you should have seen us. Pick a river's law in bed, suck the red up. Captain was a lager, by Christ he was a bugger. He wasn't made to shovel sh from one place to another. Cabin boy was kipper. By Christ he was a nipper, stuck front and glass of his arse, circumstance a skipper. Well, we're back safe and sound. Phew! Another successful hovercraft mission. Done. The British public worried about the French building their fleet up and attacking us. Yeah. And All Hallows here was an area you could land in a shallow bottom boat, and if you got past this fort, you could go across land to Chatham Dockyard and attack it from the back. Well, mud lovers, I am at Slough 4, and this is where Mark donates a lot of his mudlarking finds, and I'm with Colin, and he's just letting me in. Me and Mark are here today. Mark's a bit bruised, he fell over. We'll talk about that later, but yeah, we have the keys to Slough 4. How exciting is this? And this is Colin. You are Hello, the, everyone. You, and you, your job title is? I'm the chairman of the trust that's restoring this Victorian fault. Brilliant, there we go. So we're gonna get inside and see what secrets it reveals. <laughs> Let's go. Follow me. <laughs> Original doors here. They're big, aren't they? They are big, yeah, nice big. and thick. Would have had a drawbridge up there where all the chains would have come down where you're standing, but obviously there's been changes over the years. Yeah, probably health and safety got rid of those. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. You've got the uh, entrance way here with officer's kitchen, pantry, which has got a lot of your finds in it. Oh, cool. Officer's toilet and guard room. Nice. This one's been restored. Beautiful. Oh, it's like it would have been back then. Yes, we're trying to be as exact as we can. Um, we started about three foot below the ground where we had to reveal all the walls that supported the joists for the floor. Then we put the floor back in, rebuilt the cells. Oh, Mark, coming in. <laughs> Hello, Here's Mark. Mark, just catching us up. Hello, Hello Mark. Mark. <laughs> no hovercraft today. No, and he's had a little accident, but uh, he fell over with a duck in his hand. That's what yeah. happens if you, uh, if you carry ducks around <laughs> without looking at curbs. I was carrying that as I fell over, I removed the duck. But you're all right, though. You, <laughs> I'm good. You, you're arguably better looking now. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Colin, as you were saying. Yes, we're in the guard room, which we've restored. We've managed to get hold of a stove off of eBay, very, very close to the original one. So we've... Uh, Reinstalled that, the chimney's on top. Once we connect the two with the flue, oh, we could do breakfast in here. We find these, we find these now. That's a nice one, actually. Oh, you can't nice. have it. <laughs> That's a nice blue one. No, I would love you, you know. It's so nice to see it in, in what would have been in situ, I suppose. Yeah, there would have been a lot of uniforms in it, but we've just removed them because we've shut down for the winter and they get damp. All oh, right. So yeah. as I say, we rebuilt from under the floor upwards. We put the two cells back in. These are original Victorian cell doors, metal backed. Oh. that come out of kitchen the barracks. 
they were knocking some of it down and building houses, we managed to scrounge them. So if you uh, go in there, you'll get a taste of what cell life was like. Oh, blimey. Yeah, pretty grim. One pallet, <laughs> one pallet bed, horse hair or straw filled mattress and a bucket in the corner. <laughs> and that is it. Wow. And a very high window and you can barely see. Well, yeah. I suppose you could probably just about see out if you jumped on the bed. Fire and loop in the corner. Everywhere there was a little hood, hidden corner, we got the fire and loops, which would have been opened up to fire out of. You can open it if you want. Oh, cool. So you would have had to have st stood on the box, but the idea is you fire on any anyone who's coming to attack you hidden around the corner. Oh, yeah. There we go. All I can see is Mark's car, so... Um... Oh, you must be the enemy. Watch out, Mark. <laughs> He'll come in for you. He's coming. <laughs> down. Awesome. Yeah, we've had all these made. We're fortunate that we've got a volunteer who's into metal work, so everyone does their bit. Oh, is this, um, is this, is this, this is the officer's museum? kitchen. The officers had their own kitchen and their own toilet away from the men. We haven't got a lot of kitchen items in here at the moment, but this was used as a horse stable when the uh, fort was not in use from 1965. It was horse stables, and anywhere they could knock down a wall or a window was missing or make a bigger hole, they brought Dobbin in and oh, wow. used it as stables. So there was a sloping floor in here, so when they washed out, all the muck went out. And Ever. we've dug it all out again. We've put the ceilings back, all lath and, lath and plaster, because they'd all fallen down. A new trade I've uh, learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah, um, plastering ceilings is a real tough job. I've, I've done it once or twice and yeah, never well, again. This, this is three layers of timber and four layers of lime plaster, different oh. grades with and without horsehair. Okay. And I can tell you now, there's over 600 kilos up there. There's <laughs> 800 kilos in that one. Flipping heck. It's, it's not a Victorian box. <laughs> Victorian shoe box. What have you got in there, Mark? We've got a lovely poison bottle to start with. Aren't they normally blue? They come in blue, green, and clear. And you've got a brown Generally. one. So he's got a brown one. And he's got a brown one as well, yeah. Just to be different. We've got an old Victorian. That might come in handy here, yes. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Still with the um, Original nails. Originals, nails, and they're, they're flat, like screwdriver ends. They have a lovely deep neck bottle. Yeah. Did you not bother washing them, Mark? No, no, there's a gentleman here that likes <laughs> Those, to do that. We, we have someone that's his job. One of our volunteers has got health problems, but he's quite happy to sit oh, behind the sink with a toothbrush. Oh, and he beautiful. comes down and beautiful, they come back all clean. Beautiful green colour in the sunlight. That, that is a nice stunning, green. Stunning, stunning green. Is that smelling salts, that one, do you think? Sometimes it's got um, embossing on the top there, it says smelling salts. It doesn't feel like anything here. And we have a Victorian pocket watch. Nice. Oh. It's unusual. That's cool. Anything on the back, like a maker's mark, or oh, you'd have to clean it up to find out. Clean it up. Beer bottle, or our whites. Our whites. I know it's broken. The old marmalade jar. Turn them round. I'll show you what we did with the others. Another poison. Another poison bottle. Nice selection. Actually, another nice green one. It's going to clean up beautifully. Mm. Your yeah, cream sure. pot, something maybe. Be great. This is where you know finds really belong. Personal collections are fine, but when you see them in here, so people can enjoy them, and that's the real beauty, as Mark can testify. This is the pen. Well, I've got loads of my finds for marmalade jars Ooh. and bottles. <laughs> got a lot of your finds in it. The two of you discovered. Oh, brilliant! Let's get a talk. Sorry, there. there's no light in there. We need a little, a little candle in here, don't we? <laughs> Look at that. We, we got various finds you've made. There's the jam jars that my wife's cleaned up and oh, put. That's um, a good job, isn't it? Put the tops on as they would have been. There we go. You got a better torch, Mark. Brilliant. We got some Love of those it. salt glazed pipes there that have actually come from the is it the five bells in Who, uh, with the landlord's name on them, and that was turn of the century. Five bells, sorry. Yes, yeah, so I've looked it up and it was a landlord around the turn of the century and there was someone else in the family that had the Fen Bell at the same time, oh, okay. which you passed coming in today. So you had that pantry there opposite the opposite the guard so they could see that no one was pinching anything because you've got all the food in there, as well as their uh, ration of rum. Yeah. Issued by the Navy, but for the Army. 
So why would you put a toilet next to where you're going to eat or where you're storing your food? This is how it is on the drawings. <laughs> so we managed to get hold of that toilet. It doesn't work, but we've got a seat from here, a system from there, and put it all together. <laughs> that's that's Isle toilet roll. Oh no! And I quite uh, like telling the people that come for tours that it was 1879. It was released to the public for sale, and they advertised it as one guaranteed splinter free, <laughs> and two for better family hygiene was impregnated with Jay's disinfectant. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> we used to have this stuff in school, didn't we? It's horrible. Oh, I can actually, remember you know, it. this is nicer than the stuff I think we had in school. Oh, I've got to have a go. No, no privacy. <laughs> Shut the door. Oh. <laughs> so this is the courtyard, or the, the main. The yeah, main courtyard, arena. parade main square, court. call it what you like. Brilliant. You've got a female toilet there. There's not one in there. I mean, we've done the room up, but we haven't got a female toilet because, as you can see by our little signs. Mm -hmm. These were the magazines, and above them would have been an identical arch where the guns were, but when they converted the fort into barracks, 1891, as you can see, married quarters, married quarters, officers' quarters, so the higher-ups were allowed to bring their wife, hence the female toilet. So we've rebuilt all the chimneys up there, replaced missing stones. Fantastic. Put the windows back, and this is what's left of a shell lift. We had to cut the handle oh, off wow, to, get really? it, to get it out. That's Ooh. awesome, isn't it? And you can imagine the shell being strapped yeah. in there, someone turning the handle. They would have gone up through the roof of this. Not that, that's an air vent. Um, and then they would have gone horizontal above for the guns and the men up there would have taken them out to use them or put them in a steel door locker. Yeah. So we're upstairs. A 12 pounder. Oh, nice, look at that. We're not quite sure of its history, other than we know it's Victorian, late 1800s. You've got the information on the board there all about it. And it was very rusty. We've had a new pedestal, if you want to call it, mm -hmm. made for it. We had that made as an interpretation. It was all shot blasted, but we couldn't afford the mechanism for it to go up and down. So we've cut it and it will swivel. Oh, wow. So we can swivel it <laughs> and we had a little mechanism made. We can put a cartridge in there oh, nice. with black powder. Oh, you can do like a demo. Yeah. When we have the children up here, if there's 30 in the class, we need 30 cartridges. <laughs> they all want to fire it. I'm a surprise. You would put it in there, pull the, pull the pin out, a locking pin goes in, you stand back with a string, mm -hmm. pull it, and the smell of black powder is very nice. And yeah. It's a Oh, it like shoots off out there. It's yeah. educational. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's something they remember, won't it? As and well. it's actually sitting on its original base. Oh wow! Uh, the only thing was they had three different bases, and this one's got two more bolts than there are <laughs> holes. So we cheated. <laughs> All right, let's shoot those Essex people. <laughs> so this is the top of the fort. Yep. 18, 1891, they decided the guns here were not good enough. So what they decided to do was turn this into barracks and they put a 9.2 inch gun and a six inch gun to the west and to the east. Okay. Come and have a look, we just dug one out. Oh, nice. <laughs> no gun, but you have a look. <laughs> when we came here, the land was flat all the way across because they wanted more room for horses. Oh, right. So what they'd done is just basically pushed the dirt in and buried it. And as we've dug it out in two hits with the drawings and the odd lights and some helpful men in their diggers. We put it back exactly as it was. Fantastic. So we've got a few different stages of guns here. So we had breech loaders in the fort originally, then they expanded to put a six inch and a nine inch on either side. This is a nine inch one. We've literally, we're down here yesterday. There was a crack in the concrete. We got our scheduled ancient monuments consents. We dug it out. So the original track is still there that the gun would have rotated on. Heck, that is huge. Yeah. and. It looks heart-shaped, but someone suggested to us that's where the hydraulic rams were, one, two. So, so you can see where the gun was bolted down. Uh, and if you think of the other side where that was down below and came up and fired, they changed their mind to going to be visible. So where these notches are that we've put back, there would have been metal going across on a plate. And this is the size of, I believe they call it a barbetted, sort of wasted pedestal that it sat on. Right, okay. Uh, lockers here again, which we've had metal doors on. There's the ammunition lift, right. where things would have come up from below. Yeah, superb. And, and all this was buried. Really? 
Well, when we came here, the, the tip of this was just about all you could see. Wow. So when we go down in the middle, if you look up, you can see we've dug out 22 feet, I think it is down. Why do you think they buried it? Well, the story from some of the local ladies is the people with the horses wanted more room. It serves no purpose, let's push all their dirt in there. It makes more room for Dobbin. True, but that's a lot of work though, isn't it? For horses. Apparently, and there's some other, even younger people said, oh, I can remember the bulldozers just pushing it all in. Oh, fair enough. And there was a load of rubble down here. Some of it was building stuff and mm. bits of caravan and things. So uh, it was probably a dumping ground turned Yeah, apparently it. it was oh. still exposed in 1978. We've got yeah. a picture of it. And it was after that, and they started knocking down buildings on the seafront, which were basically brick with a cast concrete roof. What are we going to do with it? Stick it in that hole. Yeah. Because they owned it. It was just somewhere to stick free rubbish. Would that be an Anderson shelter? That is one which we, someone was getting rid of, and one of our blokes, very keen, we grab anything. Yeah. Yeah, we got it in bits, so our plan so that, is... So that is an original from yeah. 40s, pucker. Yeah, it's obviously a little rusty in places, oh, but course, we, yeah, we yeah. grab anything. That's good, that'd, the, be, that'd, be, that'd look awesome when that's... When he asked, out, um, apparently he said, well, if you take it apart and take it away, you can have it. So, as I say, we grab anything. But cool. And of course, clean your boots before you go in. <laughs> a Victorian, yeah, boot Victorian boot scraper. <laughs> yeah, we've got this open now. Wow. So this is a 1906 extension. It even says darts, and there were some pinholes in the circle. No, really? Darts, but I had to have an official military sign. <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. The, you've got two poems on the wall here we had to keep. Uh, the best thing to do, I think, is take a photo, I say to people, with your phone, then you can blow it up at home yeah. and read it. But it was for a soldier called Curly missing his sweetheart. Oh. So you've got two remnants on that piece there as well. And that's the best way to do it, sort of take okay. a picture and then expand it and read it. So this larger area here, we want to turn this into our museum mm. or heritage centre, as we're going to call it, and we've got more space. So that's that's our plan. It's a nice room, isn't it? And it's nice. Yeah. And it's, it's a good temperature as well for things. It's get... it's better. The everything was leaking, so we did take some of the grass off the top, which is actually that much grass, and the rest of it's sand. So mm. I'm assuming it was for impact. Then we found the roof of this further up and we coated it in bitumen, filled some cracks in, put the dirt back, and every time we're doing something, it's getting better. Fantastic And job. up those steps outside is the other nine inch position, if you want to have a look. It's identical, but you well, we'll have a look. <laughs> so they obviously decided at some stage that two of those nine inches were going to be better than the others, keeping up with the enemy, you know. Yeah. Shut the other side down, and then in the 20s, the site was sold off. Oh, right. So 30s, you had the lions and tigers. So then we had the boats that were stored here until 1965 when the yacht club was built. Then the horses right up until February 18. Wow. Lots of different owners, but right up to February yeah. 18. And again, all this was buried. Completely. You could yeah. just see the tip. So we, we would have been underground. Yeah, fantastic. That's our little museum. Cool. Do you want to go in there? Yeah, please. I'll find the key. Um, yeah, we call this the 1902 building, which was obviously when it was built. Built as a thick walled recreation room for the men uh -huh. uh, because they were known locally as having too much time and too much money. And the basic problem around here was there weren't enough females to go around. Yeah, so they went, in, they went into Stoke to the Nags Head. There was often punch ups. Oh, really? <laughs> and they thought they'd build, build them a recreation room. And what the women were just sent down here, were they? <laughs> so we took down the modern ceiling that was in here and cleaned it all out, painted it all out and we're using it as a little museum. And if we get our lottery grant, we're actually going to take this underground into a bigger room. Nice. Thank you so much to Colin for showing us around. And I recommend going to one of their open days as soon as you get the chance. Or if you'd like to donate to the restoration, I put a link in the video description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's just a little snippet of what we got here at Slough Fault. If you want to come and visit us, the tours start again mid-March through to about the 1st of uh, November. And you can also see more on our website, sloughfault.org.uk. Hope to see you soon. So because it's not of the right time for the fault era, yeah. and it would have faced out in the estuary, we put it there facing that way. Nice. And that's a 3.7 inch anti-aircraft gun. Cool. It's rusty, it's stuck in that position, but once we clean it all up. Oh, the barrel's clear. Oh, excuse you, Mark. Uh, yep, 
Yeah. More, more TV car. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out part one here and subscribe and tap that notification bell because me and Mark have made some more wonderful discoveries you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next Mudventure.